All right, guys, I got a video that uh, was requested by uh, someone on YouTube. They wanted to see my marker technique that I do uh, when I do uh, the colored pencil over the marker. Uh, you can see my other video on that technique. Uh, it's where I take colored pencil and put it over top of an underpainting that I do with marker. So uh, this is showing the underpainting that I do. I'm using Blick Studio markers. Uh, this particular one is going to be for the skin. It's uh, 95 peach. For the main part of the suit, I'm going to be using 66, which is light maize. And then I'm going to be using 41, uh, which is cerulean blue for the details, or for the uh, accents on the suit, I should say. So the first thing that I do when I do uh, my underpainting and marker is I'm going to take the lightest color that is going to be on uh, the particular character or image or whatever it is and I put that light color on first. So for this Wolverine this is uh, a drawing done by uh, David Finch um, and I think it was inked by Scott Williams but uh, what we've got the the yellow and the blue Wolverine uh, he comes in a bunch of different colors, so you always have to make sure which one you've got when you do a Wolverine. But the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to take the brush end of the marker, and I'm just going to go on here, and I'm going to put a really uh, quick coloring of that base color, that light color I talked about. So I'm just going to go over the whole thing. The trick whenever we do this style is that this is an alcohol-based marker. We want to make sure that we've got good solid coverage in, in what we're doing. So I've used a really light color to do his skin, and then we'll get some of the real color of the skin later into this. So there's that really light color there. And then I'm going to go in here, and again, I'm using the brush tip. Now when I get to round objects like this, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm adding the color, but I'm adding it in the same direction that the object kind of is. So if it's round, I want to make sure that I'm coloring round. That's because if I leave any streaks, I want those streaks to follow the roundness of the form or the roundness of the shape that it's coloring in. And then in this area, I want to kind of color that in following the wrinkles. And again, what that's going to do is that if it's not solid and it does have streaks, those streaks will look like texture or maybe even look like shadows or shading when you get in there. So there's the yellow of the mask. You can see it's a really fast process. And then I got the brush tip on the blue. And I'm going to go right over top of all the black ink that's in here. So I'm not even concerning myself with the black ink or anything, and I'm just gonna go right around everything. And then of course the mask goes in this direction, so I wanna make sure that I'm following the direction of the mask. And again, I'm coloring over all of the black spots with the blue, and what that's gonna do in this style of picture is it's going to grade that black to where it just looks like a super dark blue. My students like doing this project uh, because it's so successful when you follow these steps. Um, and this is one of the important ones is to make sure that you color over the black when you do this. A lot of people when they color a coloring book page or something like this, they don't color over that black and that black ends up looking really washed out. If you can see uh, here in the video how dark this area looks, it almost looks like a really dark blue compared to this, which almost uh, becomes a washed out kind of black. Um, it should be a pretty stark comparison there. Now, once I've got this area taken care of, I'm going to go to my shadow colors. So these are just one step down. Now what's interesting is what I'm going to do with the blue, but I'll save that for a second. So I'm going to uh, light peach, which is 003, 063 yellow ochre, and I'm also using a cool gray, 50%, which is 027. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and go in the order that we went in before. This is not a tutorial about shading. Okay, so it's just the marker technique that I use, but if you need to see a tutorial on the kind of the shading concepts, I maybe could do a video about that too. But the idea here is he's already given me a lot of the shadows. I just need to add that middle 
level of shading. So all I'm going to do is go in here and I'm going to look at the forms and I'm going to very slowly go through using my brush tip and I want to add in the details of the shading so that I am helping the picture look more 3D by adding the details of the shading. Now this is a really small area right through here in this part of his mask but you should be able to see some of the shading begin to come to life here as I do that. Now let me go ahead and I'm going to do the yellow ochre. This is going to be a really important color because this is really going to make the yellow pop. And I have to pay attention. He's got so many wrinkles in his forehead and wrinkles in the suit area. You really have to pay attention to the way that that flows. So I want to kind of just use the tip of the marker to get some of the detail pieces. I'm going to adjust my hand around a little so you can see this but then also around the edge I want to give a little bit of shading around the edge it's going to make this picture kind of pop in the center so you can kind of see that and then down here in the nose I'm going to make the end of the nose dark and that's kind of what we do there now finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that cool gray to grade down or to shade my blue Okay, and this is really important. I don't have in the studio markers, I don't have a blue that I like with this as a dark blue. So what I do is I go in here and I use my grays to help me gradiate this down a little bit. And this is kind of nice because this also helps me bring out uh, more of the shading when I use my colored pencils later because this nice dark gray color works very, very well with the colored pencils. So just gonna do a little bit there, and that's gonna be it. Now, this should be coming through pretty well on the video, uh, but what I wanna do is give you a couple other colors and a couple other pictures to kind of show the technique a little bit more. So here's a picture. This is a fun one. This is from the Marvel Kids collection. Um, I found this picture, and I'll zoom back just a little bit, and I've already got the base color on. So all I wanted to do was to add a little bit of shading to the Hulk character here. And he, he's a, a large character with kind of some, some big forms to him. So I thought it might be a nice color to, uh, to uh, or a nice picture to shade. So what I'm gonna do, I always do this on my pictures. I make sure they have margins and I'm gonna test that shadow color and make sure that it's the right color I wanna use. I'm not in love with that green. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to check another green and make sure that's the base color that I used. That one's a little bit dark. Hopefully this is the right one. No, way too dark. Let's go back to that first one. I think that first one will work just fine. So. Here we go, we're gonna do just a little bit of shading, and again, this isn't a shading tutorial, but I'm pretending like my light is coming from above, and all I'm gonna do is just add some real basic shadows to this guy, going right over the color that I have, and hopefully using uh, the drawing that's here to help me kind of guide my shading. The cool thing about these markers is what I really like is that they dry when they dry they all dry just a little bit lighter so I find that that's really helpful because when they go on wet like this you can really see the variation in the color and then they dry and it's a lot more uh, of a, a less of a contrast I should say and uh, I find it to be really successful. If I want to, I can put a little elbow in right here just by adding a little shadow like this. And I'm gonna go in here to his fingers and his hands and add a little bit of shading. Now with the mouth, I can go in here, I can add this. And I will give a little uh, plug here if you want to if you want to have some fun little pictures if you like superheroes and you want some fun little pictures of color I think these Marvel uh, baby superhero it's a it's a book it's got like 75 pages of these drawings in it I think it's a lot of fun it's a neat little book um, and I found some cool pictures from it uh, 
and just use those sometimes to just if I want to do like a fun little coloring. So that's kind of how we would do the Hulk. Um, I can do his feet in here too. So I got this Harley Quinn picture that was done in the original video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this part of her hat and this part of her leg. Um, and uh, I'll probably fast forward a little bit, put it in like four times speed while I do this, just so you can see the process, um, the colors that I'm using. I'm going to be using uh, 033, which is brick red. And then I'm going to be using 046, which is dark umber, to be doing this one. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll get started on this. Now I've come back to the dark umber. Uh, this has got the base color. You can kind of see right through here a little bit of the streaking, but that's why I color in that direction again. So the streaking follows the direction, but I'll cover up a lot of that with the dark umber. So uh, back to the fast forward, here we go. All right, and there you go. So that's kind of the, uh, the light and the dark uh, colors together. Now this is where the colored pencil aspect comes into it, and I'll just show you this really quickly. Um, I'm using Prismacolor Premiers, um, as I'm sure a lot of you are using. Uh, let me sharpen this one real quick. Uh, what I would use in this scenario here uh, is I would use a white to help uh, this is just uh, PC 938, it's white. Um, I would use this white to now go over, and, and these are and can be very opaque if you press super hard, but if you press lightly, they just roll right on top like that, and it brings sort of a pinkish color to the party. Something like this. Something like this. Can show a little bit of the wrinkle. I can put like a highlight down the center. What's cool about this technique is because of the color that's underneath the white, it'll actually change the overall look of the white. And then in one of the high points, if you want to really press hard with your white, you can get that. So there. And then another thing that I would do is use uh, black, which is PC 935, and I would go through and darken down the shadows. This isn't like a big secret using these colored pencils. Well, there are several videos where people are using uh, Copic markers and uh, going through and then and doing some colored pencil work with them. Uh, I just haven't seen a lot of videos where it, it kind of shows the whole process and talks about it too. So I'm going to use my black, and that's going to darken down some of my darker shadows and it's going to make everything kind of pop as we use it so uh, that's the concept that's the idea uh, this is how i get to that harley quinn uh, video that you see on there where i talk more about the colored pencils and stuff so if you got any questions you can just post them in the comments or if you want to see another video on uh, uh, some more of these techniques just let me know and i'll uh, i'll try to get that up as soon as possible see you guys later thanks quick uh, update on the video. I just thought I'd throw this in. I went ahead and finished uh, the base coloring for the Harley Quinn. And as a note, um, I have a glass drawing board that I normally put a piece of paper under. Um, because I got caught up in the video, I didn't do that. And when I did the white and I, when I did her skin color, which uh, I believe I used 10% cool gray to base out the white areas, to give it just a little bit of color, and I used a color called Antique White to do her skin. Uh, when I based those out, I picked up some red that had bled through onto my, uh, onto my glass board. So, um, kind of a uh, problem there, 
But the cool thing about that, I'll zoom in and see if you guys can see that. See that bleed that happened right through here? Um, the cool thing about that is that, I'll stay zoomed in. If I take my white, this is the best part about using the colored pencils. If I take my white, I can bring that right along there and I can really do a strong job cleaning that up so it's not near as obvious. And as I go through here, I can use my white also to clean this up. And that'll give kind of a, it's a little help for when you get kind of a nasty marker bleed, um, which happens from time to time. And, and I got a little phrase that I use with my students sometimes. It's not about the artist who makes the best art uh, the first time, it's about the artist that cleans up any mistakes that they have. Um, the best artists are really good at cleaning up when they have a mistake. So if you do end up having a mistake, just understand how to clean that mistake up, and uh, you should do pretty well. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna finish doing this in colored pencil, and then uh, whenever you guys, uh, whenever you guys. At the end of the video, this will uh, I'll have a still frame of what she looks like as well as the Wolverine. I'm going to go ahead and finish uh, basing him out so you can see him too. So I'll have a still frame of that at the end of the video. Uh, and again, thanks for watching, guys.